indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Calguire. Ms. Darmo. Here. Mr. Doby. Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Here. Ms. Karen Minugian. Here. Mr. Litwack. Here. Mr. McGuire. Here. I heard you. Thank you. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Ms. Tursich Keeley? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Could you please uh, read the statement of adequate notice? Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. By advertising the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January 14, 2021, by sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on July 7, 2021, posting notice on school bulletin boards and main entrances on July 7, 2021, posting a notice electronically on the district website on July 7, 2021, by following a written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on July 7, 2021. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes of the June 23rd, 2021 regular meeting and executive session number one? and executive session number two meeting and the minutes of May 19th, 2021. Executive session, please. Motion. So I so move. Okay, one moment. I think I heard Catherine motion. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you, Catherine. And who second? Senator Lakari. I, I was moving. I'll second. Okay, I'll second it. Oh, messed up, delayed. Is it off or is it? It's on your now, it's it just off? delayed. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, Aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm opposed. Um, my comment is I usually don't review the minutes since we have a video of the meeting, but I did see some mistakes, for example, in the curriculum and instruction report section. It referenced Miss Whitney giving a report. So I did see a mistake in the minutes and that's why I'm voting opposed. Okay, thank you. It's just correct, just correct the mistake. It's not a... That, that's yeah, Usually I, I would have emailed sooner, but lately I haven't even been reviewing the minutes since we have video, but I just happened to review them before the meeting and saw the mistake. Yeah, well then it, should the mistake should be corrected so we can correct the mistake now correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if it's a mistake hey, hey, it should be me. corrected um good evening everyone my name is amy gear and i'm uh, an attorney from parker mckay and i'm happy to join you tonight technically you have a motion pending right now you have a first and a second so you need to act on the pending motion um before you do anything else and it's not um comment period um, the order of events should go first, second, then discussion, and then once discussion is over, you move straight to a vote. So you're voting right now. You can't alter the motion. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you, Amy. Um, any abstain? Anybody abstain? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. And so also, just so the group knows, yes, that's... Uh... That's Amy. She's from Parker McKay. She's our substitute solicitor for tonight. We usually have Susan Hodges. So thank you, Amy, for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. And, and can I move that we correct the approved minutes? Um, I think it, if sure, you can make a motion. The minutes have already been adopted and approved, though. So if you want to fix them, yeah. Make, you have to be specific about what it is you want them to do. So it's a motion. I, I, uh, the Vera, whatever Vera is saying is was inaccurate. Vera, what was that specifically? Um, the curriculum and instruction report um, that it referenced that Mrs. It, Ms. Whitney making a report from 2020. And that was the thing, that was what I caught I didn't go over it with a fine tooth comb. I just saw that that was 
Incorrect. Is it that she wasn't on the board at that time or someone else? Gave yeah, this is board? this is what's from the, June. What's the correction specifically? Uh, this um, is it's it's an error from from Vicky LaSalle, which I'm I'm kind of confused by this right now too, because th this this wouldn't have been on anything related to what we were doing last time. So I I, I honestly can't explain why that's there, but you know, if if there's a way for us this, to that out, I think that we absolutely the strike. Should. The strike the instruction and program committee report section. It's it's saying that I was talking about Wi-Fi aid for students without uh, Wi-Fi. I mean, it's it's an old um, yeah. That's old. It, it's something from yeah. 2020. There, are, there, there might other be other reasons. mistakes. I just didn't go through it. I just saw that one very fast. What what about the possibility of Stephen and? Uh, and me, what about the two of us going through this and making sure that this is correct? Because I, I'm looking at it now and wondering what in the world happened with these minutes. I mean, I'm, I, I apologize for this, but whew. might have been cut and pasted so, and it just got yeah. left there. So my recommendation would be, um, my recommendation would be then that you direct the superintendent to review um, the minutes for accuracy and then at the next board meeting, they can be resubmitted and you can make a motion to adopt amended minutes. Thank you. Um, okay, Joe, I would like to, to make that directive. If you could please Abs absolutely the and amend. I will, I will handle that. I'll even get in touch with Vicki about it because she has the original files for the, she has the original files for the minutes. Okay, and then we will revisit it just as Amy said, that would work out well. Thank you. I appreciate that guidance. Thank you. Okay, I need a motion to accept reports of secretary and treasurer for May 2021, which are in agreement. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, uh, Bob. Second. Second by Phil. Thank you. Questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Garmo abstain. Thank you. Motion carries. Community liaison reports. Riverside High School. Is there anyone uh, here for that? I don't believe so. Correct. Okay. Delanco PTO. Don't believe so. DISA recreation and or township committee. I see Mr. Bartlett. I'm not sure if he. Uh, for DISA, just uh, for anyone on who's going to be registering their children for our fall soccer season that begins uh, first week of September, this is the final week for registration. We're closing registration on, uh, I think it's Sunday midnight, so the uh, 18th. So go online at dysasports.org and uh, register your kids. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. So, uh, Marissa, Mr. Cameron again, I just want you to know that Vicki did share the minutes with me. I reviewed them and I'm opening her minutes that she shared. Uh, they are not the minutes that we have in our packet. Okay, dokie. So we do have correct minutes from June 23rd that were reviewed and approved already. I'm not really certain what took place there, but Steve, you and I will uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's certainly something we can work out and then make sure that it's uh, adjusted. And yeah. So I just I just want to make sure everyone is aware. Vicki did not make an error. I I do have June 23rd minutes from Vicki that are correct. So uh, that's that's what I have right in front of me on my screen. So no worries. It's the joys of technology. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not. We'll make it happen. Make it work. <laughs> Thank you. OK, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the meeting this evening. Uh, we hope to make it quick and painless, and I will move this forward into public comment on agenda items, please. Okay, I don't necessarily see any hands up. I'm going, oh wait, Catherine, I'm sorry. Um, yes, would you like to speak? Good evening. I just wanted to ask about uh, item T under finance committee, if you could share a little bit information about the YMCA contract, if it's gonna be at the Delanco school or if students will be bused to their facility. Thank you. Okay, Joe. Mm -hmm. so, um, I appreciate that comment slash question. 
Uh, there will be more information for parents about this once we approve it. Uh, it will be housed in Delanco. It will not be housed in any other facility except for Pearson. Thank you. More information to come. Wonderful. And if, let's see, are there any other comments? I do not see any other hands, so I will close the public comment on agenda items at this time. Superintendent's report, Mr. Mersinger. All righty, thank you. So, uh, when it comes to our superintendent's report, uh, a motion is requested to approve the following items A through E, and a uh, motion is requested. I make the motion, Darmo. Thank you, Vera. Cameron. Cameron Jenkins, second. Questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Instruction and Program Committee report. There is nothing to report at this point in time, so we will move along to the Finance Committee report. Mr. Litwack. <clears throat> so, so I've been trying to, now that I'm on here, I thought I had, oh, here we go. I can do it. Uh, just a moment. Just mm -hmm. bear with me. I'm on my, here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm low on bandwidth is my problem. Now, that I, okay, here we go. The committee chairperson who's, I'm gonna make a motion to approve the following. Uh, and I'll read them off so everyone's aware of where our finances are going. Uh, a, monthly line item transfer for May, 2021 Exhibit 1. Uh, B, special education tuition contract for the 2021-22 school year with Hampton Academy for one student to attend for the period July 12, 2021 to June 30, 2022 at the rate of $64,033.80 with an extraordinary service of $39,650, which is Exhibit J. C is Brett Denovi and Associates to provide behavior and educational consultation services for the 2021-22 school year, and that's Exhibit K. D is special education tuition contract for the 2021-22 school year with Yale School, Inc. for one student at a rate of $70,000.51 uh, $70,051.80, that's Exhibit L. Tuition contract for the 21-22 school year with Riverside Board of Education to send students with multiple disabilities for the period of 9-1-21 through 6 22 at the annual rate of $24,088 per student, and that's Exhibit M. At this tuition contract for the 2021-22 school year with Riverside Board of Ed to send high school students at a cost of $14,295 per student. There are additional costs that may apply for resource room and that's exhibit N. G, special education tuition contract for the 21-22 school year with Kingsway Learning Center for one student to attend for the period 7-21-21 through 6-30-22 at the rate of $64,213. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I thought there was 80 cents and then another 32 cents. It's 80 cents per, and there's 32 students. And that's, so that's per student. And I'm, is that that we have, no, something's not right there, right? Am I correct? That's something's, uh, Steve, you see where I'm reading at the rate of 64, it's G, E sends 
and then it has 32 cents after it. So I'm assuming it's either 80 or 32 cents per student if we can get that cleaned up and uh, one to one eight at a rate of 30. Yeah, I'll, I'll adjust it for the day. Yeah, it's either probably 80, 80 or 32. It 30. was obviously when, he, when I was copying and pasting. Yeah. I yeah. didn't it's, delete one I think of them. It's, yeah, I think it's probably the 32. Yeah, probably. I have it right And yeah. then, yeah, and so the, that we don't want to hold up everything, but that's, we know that's an error that will be corrected. And a one to one aid at a rate of $36,120 per student, that's exhibit O. Special education tuition contract for the 21-22 school year for Kingsway Learning Center for one student to attend the period 7 one six through 6 22 at the rate of $64,213. And once again, uh, 80 cents most likely per student and one-to-one -one aid at a rate of 36,120 per student. And that's exhibit P. I is special education tuition contract for the 21-22 school year with the Kingsway Learning Center for one student to attend for the period 7121 through 63022 at the rate of once again, that's $64,213.80 per student exhibit Q. Special education so way, tuition contract for the 21 22 school year. Yeah. It's the 80? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, thank you. And then we're, I think we're on J for the rate of the 64,000, um, this is Kingsway Learning Center with a one-to-one -one aid at the 36,120 per student, that's exhibit R. K is special education tuition contract for the 21-22 school year with the New Jersey Department of Human Services Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired for one student for the period 9-1-21 through 6 22 at the annual rate of $2,200 per student, and that's exhibit S. Special education tuition contract for the 21-22 school year with New Jersey Department of Human Services Commission of Blind and Impaired Student for one student for uh, that same period for the annual rate. Uh, okay, that's just a repeat. If you look, that's exhibit S, exhibit S. So K and L, one needs to be deleted. Is there no, there are that? two students. There's two students, two separate students. They're two. They're two separate students. Yeah, so that was on last year, so I kept it that way. Okay, and they're both on the same exhibit. It's the same. Okay. It's exactly the same form. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they, they're two different students that are both going to the commission of the blind and we're paying $2,200 for each of them, correct? It's a state aid deduction, that is correct. Yes. Thank you. M is special education tuition contract with approve, with approve the Burlington County Special Services School District to provide a one-to-one -one aid for um, extended year at a rate of $200 per day for exhibit T. Approve Penn Medicine to provide occupational and or physical therapy services at the Katzenbach School for the Deaf, it's exhibit U. Uh, o is NutriService monthly reports for May and June, that's exhibit B. P is submission of the ESA grant application for 21-22 school year and accept the grant award for these funds upon the subsequent approval of fiscal year 2021-20 SEA application as attached as Title I Part A, Improving Basic Skills Program Skills, $73,831. Title II Part A, Supporting Effective Instruction, $10,454. Title III, English Language Learner, $3,396. Title I, Part A, 
student support and academic enrichment, $10,000. The total allocation is $97,681. Q is a submission of the IDA grant application for 21, 22, $134,487 for IDA basic and uh, 3,554 for IDA preschool and accept the grant award of these funds upon the subsequent approval of the fiscal year 21-22 IDA application. The renewal of the contract with Horizon Insurance Company for 2021 to provide vision coverage at zero increase, uh, exhibit W. S is virtual health to provide occupational employee health service, that's exhibit X. T is general service contract with Camden County Educational Service Commission for 21-22, that's exhibit Y. U is educational consortium for telecommunication saving ex agreement, exhibit Z. V is participation in the National School Lunch Program and After School Meals Program for 21-22 school year lunch and breakfast programs for both schools. Q, the appointment of Stephen Burns as the district qualified purchasing agent with awarding of contracts up to the bid threshold of $44,000 and quotes up to $6,600. R, payment of bills from the amount of $711,440 as exhibit AA S, ratification of bills from cafeteria funds with the amount of $12,879.38 with checks numbers uh, 22, uh, 2,205 and 206 as exhibit DB. And T is the YMCA contract for before school and after school child care services for 2122, which is exhibit CC. And you can see where our money is going and you can see where we're primed up. And I have some, I hope, good news later on with when I'll be reporting from what's been going on at the state and county levels and the kind of um, resources we may be receiving to help it with special education costs that haven't been seen for a long time. Okay. So that's why I wanted to go over so everyone can see where our costs are. Mm -hmm. It's okay. not Let's... that Mr. Phil Jenkins has been wrong in saying that there's been a, um, you know, that the special education, it's a, what do we do about it? So I move, I make the motion. Okay. Can we have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Bob. Questions or comments? Dharma with comment. a comment. Okay, Vera. We have, um, we have QRST yeah. repeated. We have mm -hmm. QRSTUV, QRST. So could we have the final QRST at the bottom changed to WXYZ? Mm -hmm. Do you yes. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Awesome, thank you. Yes, and I have one. Right. Uh, Ms. Ms. Dono, I, uh, I caught that out and I was preparing my minutes for today already. So thank you for bringing that up. No problem. And uh, I have a question on E, uh, which is, where was that? That's for the Riverside and this coming year. So am I. I'm having a major connection issue. He is the right. contract for the 2021-22 school year with Riverside Board of Education to send students with multiple disabilities for the period of 9-1-21 through 6-30-22 at their annual rate of $24,088 yeah. per bit is per student. Per is that student. what you're talking about? Yeah, that's what do we know. Uh, how many students are we sending there that would be multiple? multiple disabilities do we have an yeah, idea generally about yet? sorry sorry um they adjusted monthly based on enrollment 
So I can't confirm an exact number. I can get you a better number in terms of where we're at right now, in terms of where we would be. But they adjust the bill each month based on enrollment. So for example, if we have 15 students now, we'd be charged with 15 for September. But in October, if 10 of them left, we'd be charged for only five. So, that, so that's why it's worded that way versus a flat fee for the entire year because we don't know what the flat fee would be for the entire year. It depends on base. Yeah, and that, I mean, with a lot of these, it's establishing and reestablishing ongoing relationships with special edu, you know, private special education schools with consortiums, et cetera. And we don't know how we use them. It gives us the ability to use them and through the year that I understand. And it, the uh, C, the Brett Benovi, are there different hourly rates for different functions of the services that they provide? Yes, there yes. are. Yes, sorry. So okay. they have they have different uh, different individuals that fill different roles. RBT, registered behavioral technicians, BCBA, uh, they relate to the behavioral consult. They're a behavioral consultant. Um, but also to go to the Riverside question, I keep a spreadsheet on this so that we're aware of all of our out of district placements. Uh, we currently have two students in uh, that we are paying for uh, yeah. 3K through 8. Now, the numbers for 9 through 12 are not available to me right now because they're case managed by Riverside. Um, but pre k through 8, we have two students. Um, and, and again, I, I don't want to get too detailed into anything related to students and, and give identifiable information. Okay, well, thank you. I think it would help us all if we had a maybe a better idea of the total special ed costs and where they might be supplemented with money coming in. I think it, that seems to be around the corner from what I've been hearing. And I had the same question that um, Mrs. Plum had about the YMCA about so that we should just stand by and wait for that to unfold. Is that correct? So the, what the board is approving tonight is simply the contract with the YMCA and then the information about the actual program the YMCA is going to share with us and we share that with all the families. Right. So we yeah, members would definitely yeah, we've been trying that for that for a while. Yeah, we've been trying for that for a while. So that's good. That's a good. That's a good accomplishment. Okay, that, that that's. That's all the questions I have. If anyone else has any questions or comments, Marissa, back to you. No, I do not have any other questions or comments. If no one else does, we'll move this forward. I have a question, Marissa. Yes, Phil. Of the, I count 11 uh, special education tuition contracts are, does anybody know if they are all budgeted for or are these all new this year? They were, Mr. Jenkins. Obviously, I'm only on like day six, so I can't speak <laughs> concretely, but I can tell you this. When I created the agenda, I carried over everything from last July, and all those items were on last July's agenda, which tells me that they're all renewals. So that's that's my answer. Joe might be able to answer more in detail because you know, he's been here, but it seems to me that they're all renewals. These are existing students, not just brand new students. However, um, there's always a lag, right? So we could have a student that entered the district two months ago and the, the child study team takes action on that, figuring out where that student's gonna be. And, and then it might not be until you know a month later or so until we receive a contract for that student to be attending a program. But what I can say, and the board is aware of this, is that um, we have not had any new classifications or placements for a couple of months or new placements in, in out of district. Um, however, uh, th there will be new updates for the board uh, for the, the recent weeks. That um, Typically over the summer, that's when we see a lot of new enrollments. All right. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Um, my comment is I'll split my vote at the end as I usually do. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll, uh, all right. All in favor? Aye. Oh, Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. <laughs> Not to interrupt, forgive me. And I know this is my first board really? meeting with you, but the general rule is, is when it comes to the expenditure of funds, you should do a roll call vote. 
most things like policy questions, policy issues, um, accepting reports, things like that, you can do um, you can do um, by voice vote. But when you're spending money, you should do a roll call vote. Okay. All right, students. Let's do a roll call vote. I'm still right. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Darmo. I vote. Can I, should I just split my vote right now then? Do that? Yeah. Yes. yes, please. Okay, um, I vote yes on letter E, F, K through F. Can you hear me okay? K through S, U, V, and Z. I vote no on A through D, G through J, T, and I abstain on W, X, Y. I'm just gonna repeat that, Ms. Darman, just make sure I, I, I got this all down correctly. No problem. I vote yes on E, F, K through S, U, V, Z. I vote no on A through D, G through J, T, and I abstain on W, X, Y. Got it, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Jenkins, Ms. I'm sorry, Mr. Cameron Jen Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? I vote yes on everything. Ms. Camus? Kara Mnuchin? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Uh, yes. Ms. Terstich Keeley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Operations and Facilities Committee report. Mr. Caliguire is not here. The report on maintenance activities, exhibit DD. I do not have it in front of me. I don't know if there's anything extensive that needs to be noted. So we can move this forward. Policy committee report, Ms. Darmo. Uh, no report at this time. Thank you. Personnel committee report, Mr. C. Jenkins. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve A through E with no real special notes on either of them. I make the motion. Need a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Dovey. Questions or comments? Okay, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Darmo? Aye. Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Karen Minugian? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Teresa Chili? Yes, sorry. Motion passes. Thank you. Board liaison reports, Riverside, Mr. C. Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Riverside board met last Thursday. We approved uh, nothing crazy. It was just routine stuff for Riverside and uh, the administrative staff presented gifts and made a few speeches to uh, Robin as uh, she will be retiring soon. And there were also speeches for Jody too. We can't forget Jody. Um, they gave them uh, some very nice gifts. It was very, uh, it was very nice, very heartfelt. Uh, Mrs. Milch made a nice speech for her. And then uh, the board uh, adjourned and we all went out for Dooney's. That's all I have. Very good, thank you. Is, is there a new superintendent that's been selected? Yes, and who is selected it? Who selected the superintendent months ago, as I reported, I think in May's meeting, his name is Mike Adams. He's coming from, I believe, Haddon Heights Regional School District. I don't remember that. Yeah, being... Haddon Heights, uh, we have a great acquisition from Haddon Heights. His name is Stephen Burns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. C. Jenkins. NJSBA and BCSBA, Mr. Litwack. Yeah, uh, Monday there was a the first of these county association meetings that have been taking place every two weeks. 
throughout the pandemic. And this one was done as a hybrid meeting to try that out. And it was kind of interesting. It was actually, no, it was, uh, it was the, the day of the rain. <laughs> that was, was that Monday or yesterday when we had that down pouring. They had some people in Trenton and other, there were 48 people virtually, but 23 people were there um, at Mercer County College. Anyway, the new president for the next two years, Irene LaFay, she's from Morris County, she'll be the board president. And here's what I was saying before, the uh, good news that Jonathan Pushman, who's the person who does the governmental and stays in touch with what's going on, that what's supposed to be happening is $400 million of extraordinary special education funding is supposed to be coming into the state. 50 million up under S2. And then the DCA, and this is something we really need to figure out as a board where we wanna go with this, is that $10 million in regionalization stuff if and what we want to do with that. There's funding for that. And then um, they, for some of the students that were aging out at 21 this year, they put in extra funding for them. And they've actually, at the state level, have $600 million for federal stimulus to offset the cost to continue because some of those students what they need their last year or two getting out, they never receive. So they, they need to make sure for that population. Um, there's the grade retention and apparently people can request that, but it's not automatic. That's a decision between the principal and superintendent. They decide if in fact, a uh, uh, parent says I would like my student retained because I didn't think he learned enough uh, in kindergarten or third grade. That has to be a principal superintendent's decision about grade retention. The CDC mask rules and New Jersey's flexibility, um, there's certain money that needs to be uh, spent by fiscal year 2024 that apparently um, came under the CDC funding. New regionalization, there's a provision that it wouldn't necessarily need to be voted on by all municipalities, such as we're being in a send receive relationship. So that's being looked at. They're trying to make it easier to regionalize. They're trying to make it easier to get shared services, but unless district is somewhat aggressive, you know, it's there, but we're not taking advantage of it. They had a speaker uh, who's a superintendent from uh, Dr. Matthew Murphy, who was from Ramsey. And he was really big in his district in the SEL, um, the social emotional learning and in student mental health, that depression screenings, they have it for their middle school and high school kids. It's a, there's a system that they approve, their board approved. It was a program out of Yale University. And they were very concerned with the ninth graders that there's kids that are going to totally, you know, they, they're going to their sophomore year in high school. They never were in the high school. So there's a lot of uh, training. There's mental health issues with staff. There's availability um, for staff training. And there's a for transitioning back and that everyone's going to need support. There's no expert right now on going back and how that's going to affect student anxiety, depression. And uh, apparently teachers have had despite a high degree of depression. And some of the programs that they mentioned are both for students and for teachers. Um, and the NJEA, they have not a hotline, a warm line. So if the teachers or staff have any mental health issues that they can contact them to get, to get assistance. And I don't know if we've, have we had any all remote students, Joe? 
during this time? All remote, yes, definitely. Yeah, um, but did and what they what they were saying was ideally um, that those and I don't know. I mean, now it's after the fact in a way, but and that they once a week those students need to be spoken with a student parent. I believe we were doing that from my understanding. Um, people are concerned with learning loss and key assessments. And um, his district was a district with his understanding for design. And um, some of the things that were done um, synchronous and asynchronous learning. And what they did was interesting. They had Zoom tutoring at night. So in other words, they had some of their staff that were doing Zoom tutoring at night. And it may be, this is what we're talking about, transitions coming back, some different things that may need to be looked at. Tomorrow night, I have a uh, planning meeting with the other leaders, elected leaders in the Burlington County School Boards Association to uh, design our programs for next year. Uh, usually there's four programs and everyone is invited to attend. There's, you know, part of the being a school board member in the association that you can attend these and it's where local discussions are held and it's local issues and it's shared information. So that's what my report is. You're muted, Marissa. Sorry about that. Thank you, Harry. I appreciate that. Township Committee report, Mrs. Tertius Keeley. Um, no problem. They had a meeting on Monday and there wasn't um, that much discussion of things that pertain to the school. Mostly they talked about, um, I would say the most prevalent or pertinent thing was the cannabis working group um, that they're going to be putting together. They have not yet sent the emails out. So Marissa, if you're looking in your inbox for that, they haven't sent it yet. <laughs> we'll be sending it soon. Um, and I, you know, I hope that we can get a spot on that board because obviously that tax revenue will impact our district. Um, there's a lot of talk about trash and there was a lot of talk about 200 Ash Street and what they're going to be doing with that. So nothing else of, uh, of importance. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Old business NJSBA virtual workshop 2021. 1026 2021 through 1028 2021. I believe I did see an email come out from Mr. Burns in regards to those who may be interested. I think after, I think today we had like three. I don't know if we have anybody else additional at this point in time. Is that still the number that we had interested in this virtual workshop? Yes, we have three, three board members. Okay. And how, how many administrators? Um, I didn't serve any administrators, but I know, for example, I need QPA credits. I don't, you know, so I would go if the board is going to get a group package. I would definitely attend some sessions. Um, the director of facilities needs to get CEFM credits. So if he has the ability, if the board is already buying the group package, he could benefit from it as well. I wouldn't get it solely for me or solely for him. But no, no, no. That's what I'm saying because I think it's what nine hundred dollars and exactly up to yeah. Up but we would benefit. My point being is five people. Yeah, yeah, we can get up to nine plus the administrator, so we can get up to about 13, 14 people. Uh, and I know two of the administrators, myself and the director of facilities, our certifications can benefit from going to some of those courses each year that we have. To yeah. Do. Well, um, what I guess what I'm saying is that it would seem that everyone could go, you know, certain people might want to go, but everyone would have the ability to access that, that if everyone was listed, they would have, I think they, they had it last year for up to a year. I don't know if that's the same thing this year. In other words, it's being paid for, you don't want it, but if you're not listed, you're not gonna be able to get it, is I believe how it works. And you're absolutely right, when you buy the group package, um, you buy everybody. I think yeah. we decided, or we spoke about last week, that if there were more than two interested, it benefited us to go with the group package. So it seems as though that prop, that should be the direction we go in, because it seems as though three of us are absolutely interested, and certainly more can benefit from joining as well. Yeah, that's what I, I just want to make sure that we do it in such a way that, that people that maybe now are saying they don't want to go will want to go if they see what the programs are, and since it's my understanding, since we're paying for it, even if they don't want it, to have them listed. 
if they want to. When I register last year, hmm. What's when that? I register, when I register on New Jersey school boards, it automatically registers every single board member if I take the group rate. So every board okay. member and the administrators, everyone who is on the census for New Jersey school boards administrator association, which is Great. The administrator and the board members, okay. they all have access to it, no matter what so they choose right school... now. Yeah. So everyone knows that they have that information yes. they can access of the training because that's what the associations main duty is to train the school board members. So thank thank you, Stephen, and and welcome aboard. So just to be clear, I will, since there's a travel expense and it's above $150, I will place it on the next agenda for approval, for official approval. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, letter B, discussion of committee of the whole. I believe that we had discussed that this was the direction we were going to go forward with. I wasn't totally sure, but I believe that's the direction we were going. <clears throat> and I think that we were going to utilize the meeting next week to prepare how we were going to handle it as a work session, so to speak. If anybody else has any other comment on that. So yes, I was going to bring it up the new business, but since it's on here, Committee of the Whole, I think it would be uh, helpful if we, in creating the this mechanism, that we have a strategic plan that it's built around. That's a comment that I'm making, uh, uh, to create a structure, a school board structure, that the board is, here's our plan for the next year the next two years the next three years we're we're heading you know where's the yellow brick road leading to so that's my comment i agree harry that was going to be something that i was going to bring up too coming up with a strategic strategic that plan cat? so that everybody yes that's me cat okay. so that everybody is on the same page and you know the decisions we make support that plan so i agree Perfect. I guess that's something we can discuss at the work session then. Is uh, there week. anything that, I mean, in, I guess, in the hopes of making that meeting as productive as possible, maybe we could just ask that everybody comes prepared with some research or ideas on how they see this going. Maybe we can make that meeting Absolutely. Less short or less long. <laughs> yeah. And and an open mind. Let's all come to the table with some great ideas, an open mind and a willingness to work together. I really think it could be a great tool and a great thing. So let's hope that that um, ends up being how it goes. Um, okay. And then lastly, the discussion of format of the BOE meeting in person, virtual hybrid. Um, I do want to bring up a point that uh, Ms. Dharma Darmo had brought up in email correspondence, which I think is actually a really good compromise. Um, we had mentioned about the virtual aspect versus the in-person aspect, and we had voted to go in person, but she made an excellent point in bringing up, can we then still be virtual in the sense of we'll be in person, but have our, you know, our laptops or whatever in front of us so that we can still offer that virtual aspect to the public so that they can still see the faces here more clearly because technologically we don't have the equipment um, to make it happen in another fashion. So I want to put that out there because I think that was a really good point that was brought up and I think it's worthy to um, talk about. Um, this is Vera. I, I, along with that idea, I wanted to leave open that board members who, if they were concerned for their health or if they're living with a um, person who's immune compromised or if they have any trepidations about any, any meeting that they could also connect by Zoom. Um, I plan to be in person, but I can see situations with my husband who has severe asthma. If, if, uh, if there's an uptick in cases, but the county has not um, made a determination, at that time, I would maybe want to go to, to Zoom. And if that is not allowable, we have to straighten out the policy about how um, 
we were talking before with um, Mrs. Hodges about that there should not be a limit of how many board members can connect to a meeting by telephone then, if you don't wanna let them connect by Zoom, there should not be a limit of how many can connect by telephone uh, going forward. So that's my comment. Thank you, I appreciate the comment. What is it in our current, um, how does it read currently? Because I know only two at a time, right? So do we have to go back and change that? Is that what needs to be looked at? Yo, know, that's what we talk about changing it. Mm -hmm. What's just, that, Vera? That we, if, if Zoom is not an option for board members, then the only other option for not attending in person is attending by telephone. And I remember Mrs. Hodges was saying that, you know, we could change our policy so that we wouldn't limit um, only two board members by telephone. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. That was put in a couple of years ago. And, you know, personally, I didn't understand why it was being put in, but it was put in. Um, other board members wanted that, so it was. So it needs to be changed now. And at that time, who would have thought anything of the Zoom to mention anything about Zoom? <laughs> you know, it wasn't a reality. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's worth updating the policy on that. And we've been, I think, violating the letter of the policy for a little while now, and it's, so it's kind of been on the back burner to get that done. Um, I just want to make one quick comment about the the proposal. So, the proposal for a hybrid kind of structure, um, specifically the idea of putting laptops in front of us. I, uh, it might work, but there's a possible. I think that the audio is going to possibly get messed up. We have ten people with laptops, all speaking at once. And basically, my microphone is going to pick up people to my left and right a little bit. Um, it's you know worth a try, but it it may or may not work. Um, doing the meeting on Zoom still could work. We'd have one one you know master uh, like a, a, a computer that would uh, have everyone you know one main audio source that we could fall back on. Um, I'm happy to. I have a lot of audio expertise, so I'm, and video and stuff. Uh, so I'm happy to consult if, I, if you have any questions, so Mr. Merciless. Um, as, as a teacher teaching virtually, this has come up in the classroom, the um, kids sitting in, you know, in on their desk, it, at their desk with their laptops open, and the children know they have to mute their microphones. So I would think it would, an in-person meeting would be held some, with a laptop in front of us, everyone would have their microphone muted until they wanted to speak, sort of like we do now. I mean, maybe we could have a good idea. It's a great idea. Okay. And we don't have to be sitting like, yeah. probably shouldn't be sitting right next to each other anyway. Um, so. But I, I think it's a great idea. I I think it's a very creative solution, Vera. Thank you. But I do, I do think that, that, that members should be afforded the opportunity to attend the meeting by Zoom at their home if they so choose, because if we go fall back on the telephone option, we know that the telephone option hearing was really, really difficult. So is everyone in favor of if a board member wants to attend by Zoom and not in person, is that allowable? Well, that has to be brought up in our committee the whole, because it's a policy committee uh, decision that we can discuss during that time in our workshop, and then we can bring it to a vote. But it certainly seems as though that it's in a it's a discussion that's going to be in a turn in a favorable direction. Excuse me. How many um, readings do you have to do of a policy change before it's adopted? I think at last meeting, Susan said that we could even do one that was a quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, because our policy says is is sort of open ended about it, mm -hmm. right? That's right. I forgot that she said that. Yeah. You suspend the requirement of the second reading by implementing another bylaw that says you can do that. Okay. I, per I personally will be very glad to get back to in-person meetings. I'm tired of these Zoom meetings. I'm tired of the, the video problems. I'm tired of the audio problems. It would be nice to just have a regular meeting at the school again. Well, having yesterday participated in a hybrid meeting, 
Uh, it's interesting, but it's not without problems either. So just be aware of that. And do we have the technology or they're going to be added cost? And, you know, um, how do we accommodate and for every individual person's situation about their own technology? So, you know, I, so one issue has occurred to me with that setup um, will be so if I have my computer in front of me at the desk. I'm going to be speaking into that computer. Uh, but the thing is, we, if, if anybody is attending remotely, then we're going to need to have sound coming out of Zoom. So basically, I'll be speaking into the mic, and then my voice will be coming out of the speaker maybe two seconds later, whatever the, the delay is. So actually, I think that doing that kind of approach would not work if we had people, if, if we weren't all there. We would all have to be there and have our computers muted. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's the direction I think the majority of us are feeling we should go in is that we're all there in person. We'll find a way to make it work so that we can still maintain the virtual feel for those that want to connect in from home and things like that. So we keep the uh, communication lines open. I think it's a great compromise. And of course, there are going to be some moments when you know somebody can't make it. Like Vera had said, perhaps there's a, an issue of an illness or there's a concern for health. Certainly, we can look at the, um, the policy at more detail and make those exceptions and have them noted and changed. Because as technology has changed, so has time. So let's, we can certainly look at that next week when we're um, in our community of the whole. I think it's a perfect opportunity to speak about something really important and that will impact us in the immediate future. Just a quick a nice for starting point, point for everyone to be able to uh, focus around and come up with uh, a first step in that whole process of what we're doing. And uh, the possibility, I don't know. I mean, I, it would be nice if there was some sort of guidance from outside. I don't either the school boards association or some, you know, from a university with organizational management to help us in that in case we do get sidetracked. And if we get off of issues, um, it's not going to be as productive. And I um, hope that we can all focus on issues going forward because that's what's needed. The energy needs to be put into productivity of what we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that we're all on board to make some great positive change. So that sounds good to me. All right. Anything this to is discuss? Sammy again. Oh, yes. Just, just just another note about next week. There will be certain action items on the agenda uh, mm -hmm. that need to be approved. So it's not strictly mm -hmm. a session where the board is discussing topics. And that, you know, when, when we put the notification out, uh, we did indicate that action will be taken. So it's yeah, not correct. strictly a work session. There are action items too. Sounds good. Sounds like we've got a preliminary plan of how we're going to move forward. So that sounds good. Uh, is there anything to discuss in new business? Um, I um, have something, Ms. Darmo. Um, I wanted to get information on the long range facilities plan. Is that an open public document? Um, I, I do believe that um, that was sent to you in an email or at least the guidance was. We can certainly discuss I, that. I got an email that I didn't see that it was an attachment, it was an attachment sent to me, Mr. Mersinger, and I just missed it. No, I did not send the document to the board. Uh, Stephen and I have discussed it. The long range facilities plan, uh, which I explained to the board is, is completed in conjunction with the architect of record, the school business administrator, who, as we know, started two weeks ago, and uh, the director of facilities, superintendent is involved at times, but um, as I said, you know, in my memory for seven, uh, this is my eighth year, uh, we have not approached the long range facilities plan as a board. Although, you know, if, if, if it is revised, the board would approve revisions to it. I mean, Stephen, what are, what are your thoughts? So uh, just like you said, it is, it is, it is more of a platform a web, like a web platform that you input information to. So about 10 years ago, Every single district had to input all their information to that dot into that database. I did look to see if anything, if anyone ever printed it out. I couldn't find anything in the office. 
uh, but it's all in this database. So what generally happens, so for example, my previous district in June, I put a resolution saying, we're gonna add this project, this capital project to the LRF, RF, RL, LRFP. And then basically we would give it to Bob Garrison. Bob Garrison would then amend it for us in the platform itself. And that's really all that happens to it. And what that allows you to do is to keep a certain amount of money in your capital reserves and things of that nature. Um, I believe I believe we also used Garrison Architects. And I believe it wasn't that long ago that they did a report for us. Um, I was looking through the, the old minutes. Um, I could find exactly what when that was, but do we have that report on file somewhere? We did pay for that. What kind of report was it? I, I don't know. Where, I, I, don't know what it was I believe it was looking at a long range facility, like looking at our long range plan. That's they did a report about that. I mean, I might be mistaken. So, I'll go over the minutes and, and look for that and pass to you. Yeah, the one point of clarification I want to make is, is um, we could talk as a board, right? We could say we want to have a we want to have a long term plan for our for our buildings. That may be different than the LRFP. The, L, the LRFP is is really a database that collects building needs ten years ago. And they keep saying they're going to update the platform, and we keep trying to update that platform, or they keep trying to update that platform, and we just give it updates. Is my, my personal, is my opinion though. It is what we do. So, are you, maybe Garrison maybe gave us an idea of an assessment? Is that more what you're looking for? Um, Versus you know what? Or, I'll have to go back through past years because I do remember seeing it, and then when I get that specific year, um, I'll email you because gotcha. I would like to see what was that. done. That's, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like maybe they assessed something in our buildings and because you're saying it as a report. Um, yeah, I'll find it. I do remember seeing it, but um, I, I don't have the year and the month offhand, but um, I'll get back to you on that. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else in new business? Okay, I believe the distributions are all out. Is there a public comment on non-agenda items? Ms. Foley, I see your hand up. Hi, thanks for um, letting me comment. My name is Danielle Foley. I'm at 14 Time and Circle, and it is a kind of agenda item. I just wanted to comment on my daughter is one of the Kingsway Learning Center students on the agenda, and I know one of the board members voted no, which I um, respect this board member and that she wants to do her research and whatnot. I just wanted to make a comment that um, if anybody chooses or would like to meet my daughter, she has a Rett syndrome, but not Tourette's, Rett, R-E-T-T -T syndrome. She's um, very complex. Um, it um, pains me. Um, I'm also an educator in um, Voorhees. It pains me that her tuition is a lot. Um, so I understand the concern that comes behind that, but her um, needs are pretty complex, like I said, and if anybody would like to learn more about her or meet her or anything like that and understand why she needs to be placed out of district, um, I'd be more than welcome at any member, not just the member that um, voted no. And again, I respect that by all means, but I just, um, it pains me and it hurts my heart to, um, I just want to just see that that's, she needs to be placed out of district for various reasons. And um, like I said, she has Rett syndrome and she's got a long list of medical and cognitive um, delays that require her, unfortunately, to be placed out of district. I wish nothing more than for her to be placed in district because I'm all about public education, but she needs to be placed out. So I just um, wanted to comment on that. And again, no hard feelings or nothing personal along those lines. Um, I just wanted to put that out there. I know the price tag of these out of district kids and my daughter is one of them. And again, I know that's hard especially for our district that's small and it takes a big chunk out of our budget sending these kids out, but um, that's what she needs for her education. And again, I put it out there for anybody wants to reach out. My husband and I are very open and upfront and um, just honest people. So we are more than welcome to discuss anything with anybody. And again, I wish it wasn't that expensive. So no hard feelings or anything like that. So I just thank you for letting me um, vent or comment. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Olette? Yes, hi, good evening. Uh, I have uh, two items. Uh, one, Mr. Litwet may be aware of. Um, there was a uh, comments that were made out there in the public that uh, 
the state of New Jersey has $10 billion in budget surplus for the uh, 2021 and $10.2 billion in federal stimulus aid uh, coming in. And there is a group in Trenton that is trying to persuade the governor to, uh, was urging the governor to fix the flawed school funding formula. So uh, if Mr. Litwack has any information on that, that would be helpful. And if we need to support Mr. Litwack in uh, reaching out to the governor and saying, you know, we need those, some of those dollars, I'm sure he's not going to donate all those dollars, but a portion of those dollars to uh, help to straighten out our school funding here in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I think that would help many, many students and also help the taxpayers. So uh, I believe that what the changes they've been making, they're looking by 2024 to be on course. They, they're, this is the first time in who knows how long they they made payments to retirement funds. They're, there's this much more excess money than ever anyone ever thought would be there. And that is part of it. There was a plan by State Senator uh, Sweeney, who is the head of the Senate, president of the Senate, of a, you know, sort of the path to get there. And COVID shut down most efforts, but reopening, it looks like there's even more money than they had anticipated. So, uh, you know, uh, we're always looking to get more and more money. The School Boards Association, um, you know, lobbies and is a player, you know, within the, the educational community. Um, so yeah, uh, any, any way we can get more money, Fern, that would be great. And likewise, you know, we keep hearing that this money's around the corner it's around the corner. Well, the school year opens really soon. The school year opening is around the corner. So hopefully this funding will, will come through. That's how it's been budgeted. So unless there's some other kind of emergency, I don't see it going anywhere else, Fern. But that's mm -hmm. maybe Steve has some insight or Joe or from the organizations that they belong to. Because that's what it is. It's for the longest time saying, yeah, there'll be money, there'll be money, there'll be money, there'll be money. And apparently, there's supposed to be money for hiring principal, all kinds of things to get schools up and running again. It's just been very problematic. So, Fern, can you think of anything else or how that you know, specifically what you would, uh, the questions I should be asking, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Uh, oh, forgive, me for, forgive me for interrupting. I, um, and again, I know I'm new to your meetings, um, but traditionally the public comment portion of the meeting is for the, is for the public to simply comment. It's not a discussion portion of the meeting. So my, my recommendation at this point would be to have a conversation after the meeting um, of, about this particular strategy um, because public comment, is, it's not supposed to be a back and forth exchange. It's supposed to be the public makes their comments to the board and the board receives their comments before moving does on. I include, does that include thank elected you. officials? Well, I thank you, Amy, for that. I, yeah. I appreciate that and I respect that. Uh, so uh, thank you. And Mr. Litwick and I can have that discussion yeah, later, and it, later this week. Are, it, Amy, are you aware that Mr. Olette is on the council? On the Actually, I was not aware. Yes, forgive yeah, me, I yeah. was and not aware. That's why, because he asked me specifically, and you're absolutely right. That's the way our meetings are supposed to be run. It's new because we're hearing it for the first time. But right. it was that he addressed specifically. So, Fern, you and I can have that conversation. Agreed. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Amy. Okay. And uh, thank you, Amy. And my second point, uh, or that I'd like to share um, in, uh, in Congress, uh, the House of Representatives passed uh, the Hot Car Act. And why I bring this up is uh, in, the in the data and personally experiencing this with a family member, um, in the Hot Car Act, it talks about uh, 
children who have passed away or died in cars. And uh, I guess for the public to know is uh, the child that passed away within our family uh, was left in the car. Uh, and I guess you call it motor memory or muscle memory. And the mother had dropped uh, two of the, uh, the one child off at daycare. And then the other child, she, for whatever reason, because the routine had changed because of the summer season, uh, the child was left in the car. And so the dad went to pick up the children after work. And he said, my, here's my son, where's my daughter? And they said, the daughter was not dropped off. And uh, so he called his wife and she ran out to the car and the ch child had passed away in the car. And the detective who had investigated the situation said, uh, that's why people, parents, mothers, fathers need to put something in the back seat, whether it's a purse or a, um, a briefcase or something that you have to get out of the back seat just to make sure. Uh, so I share that because of the pain that our family experienced, but not wanting anyone else to feel that pain and that loss. So I would ask that as you know folks who have young children, you know, share the story with them uh, that it's important. We get busy in our lives and it happens to the best of us, uh, the best of people. And so that, you know, they put something back there, get in, make the change the routine uh, so that a child is not left in the car. And that's all I have to share, but I thank you for the time. Thank you so much. I appreciate that comment and the insight as well. Hey, on that topic, Joe, I know that you have like a messenger system that goes out to all the parents in town, right? Or like all the parents of students in town. Is there a way that you could like send some information about that? Is that something that we do at all just to like as a reminder in the hot weather that we've been having? Well, I mean, appropriate? I don't know. I'm just, just positing an I mean, idea there's, here. <laughs> there's nothing preventing me from doing that. I know, you know, we send messages about all sorts of things, you know, so if that's something the board wishes for me to do, of course, I'll do that. Um, and I, you know, there's information, there's a, an act that Fern just mentioned. I mean, there's no reason why that can't be shared as well. I think that that would be a, a great idea. Um, I think that I would like us to look into that act that Mr. Olette had brought up specifically. And I think that would be a great blast to put out there. It's timely. I mean, this is the summer and it's going out to families with children. I think it'd be a wonderful thing to do and a, an honor to Mr. Olette and his family as well. Absolutely. Okay. If there are no other comments, public comments on agenda items, I'll close that portion of the meeting. It looks as though we do need to go into executive session to discuss CSA evaluation for 2020-2021. Um, I would like a motion to go into executive session. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Catherine. Second, Steve. Thank you, Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 No long. So, Oh, okay. Yes. Once we vote on that, I'll, okay. So, I mean, we could go in, it's 8.15 now. I'm thinking it's going to be, I pray no more than an hour. So by 9.15, we need to come out. All in favor again? I'm sorry. Can we also uh, discuss the expenditures for security measures? Um, Expenditure, expenditures for ex security measures, which I brought up at the last meeting and I was told that we could go over that in executive. Has so, that been prepared? Vera, I had, I had responded to your email and we do have a list of items that uh, Stephen and I could share with the full board by email uh, related okay. to- Okay, that'll be a better use of time. Okay. Awesome. Okay, if there are no other questions or comments, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The motion carries, we'll go into executive. Please refer back to the email that Mr. Mersinger sent because that is where your BOE executive session link is placed. All right, we'll see you all there and we will be back 
around 915 for anyone who would like to wait. Thank yeah, you. So Albert, Albert is going to keep it active. However, um, there is no plan to take any action on items except for adjournment once we come out of executive. Just so you know, there's no plan for any action. Correct, uh, Mrs. Kamenugian? That is correct. All right. Okay, I don't see Harry, but by the time we get, if we were to wait, we'd end up having to wait a little bit longer because I think he's having some major computer connection issues. So I make a motion, I'm asking for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Uh, Cameron Jenkins, motion. Phil Jenkins, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. The meeting's adjourned. Thank you everyone for joining. I appreciate your time. Have a good night, everyone. Good Thank night, you. all. Thank you. Thank you. You too.